Hey, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 26. We we did the other night. Jeremiah, by the word of God, was told to buy his uncle's son's property and seal the evidence in an earthen vessel that will last for, for quite a bit of time. And you know it will seal it because, like I said, I'm not into the Dead Sea Scrolls, but that's what the Dead Sea Scrolls were sealed in, clay pots. So we pick up in Jeremiah 32, verse 26. We left off with Jeremiah praying. <laughs> and he comes up with this great, you know, God, you're wonderful. You're the creator. You do this and all that. And then he ends the prayer. Why did you have me buy this property? Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord. <laughs> now, that's a snap answer to Jeremiah. Now, run back to his prayer, verse 25. For thou hast said to me, O Lord God, that's not what God said. That's Jeremiah, remember? O Lord God, buy thee the field for money, take witnesses. For the city is given to the hand of Chaldeans. God didn't say for the city is given to the hand of Chaldeans. Jeremiah, he got a little... And then the Lord comes back and says, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh. Human animals. Is there anything too hard for me? That is the statement he makes about a 90 year old woman. Going to be able to have a child. That is a statement he makes to a woman who has not had any sexual marriage bed relation with a man. And she's going to have a baby. And God uses for Jeremiah, I know what I'm doing. And seriously, if you've never gotten to a Jeremiah with God in your life, I don't think you're really living the Lord or you have not been aged enough in the Lord. Because there are times that God will have you do something. It's like, God, really? Seriously? I've had those times. You imagine Paul, he preserved the Lord three times for a thorn in his flesh. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. And you just mess it. Really? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city to the hand of the Chaldeans. That was the end of Jeremiah's prayer. That's not what Jeremiah wants to hear. Why did you have me buy this property, Lord? The Chaldeans are going to come. Well, I'm going to give the hands of Chaldeans. And you know, it's not ever recorded Jeremiah getting this property back. And to the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, he shall take it. And the Chaldeans that fight against this city shall come and set the city, shall set fire on this city and burn with the houses. All right, before we move on, God is pronouncing judgment against Jerusalem and the city upon whose roofs they have burned, not really, they have offered incense unto Baal. So the destruction of the city and the area of Judah is because they have angered God in their sins and their worship of other gods. To pour out drink offerings unto other gods. To provoke me to anger. Now there's nothing wrong with burning incense in your house. If you got pets, you got children, 
You live in Florida, uh, humidity, incense, different smells, whatever you want to call them, are great. But they are burning it to bail. And if you want a terrible smelling incense, the incense that the prayer, the, the, the priest have in the Roman Catholic Church when they start their service and that parade down the, the aisle. Man, I, I almost still can smell that. That, that gags you. And pour out drink offerings onto other gods to provoke, provoke me anger. So they're worshiping and honoring other deities. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil. <laughs> There's no good. They have reached a, a condition there they only done evil. Before me from their youth. Can you see America there? For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the works of their hands, saith the Lord. Now, let's imagine all the things that their hands are doing. Incense, incense drink offerings, making idols and images and prayers to other gods, holding statues, rubbing statues, cleaning statues, trimming the, the, the groves. You know, there's only a few things that God wants a, a, a Jewish person to do with his hands. He wants you to bring his your offerings. You're to bring that livestock. You are to lay your hands on the head of that, that animal, and you are to slay that animal. You're not to offer the incense. That was in the holy place only by the priests. You don't offer the drink offerings. For this city has been to me a provocation. You can see on the on the uh, the YouTube video we have here. It's anything that excites anger, a cause of resentment. It's to provoke. Israel and Judah is exciting God to anger. And their actions are, God's like, keep on doing it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have it. You keep on that. I'm going to let you have it. Jeremiah, you warned them, and they keep on doing it. They're going to get it. And they're going to get it. It's like a mother. You wait till your father gets home. You, you, you guys better knock it off. Did I tell your father? For this city has been as a provocation of my anger and my fury from the day they built it, even unto this day. Solomon built the temple, and soon afterwards Solomon started messing around with the law, messing around with other women, and messing around with other gods. Solomon spent more time for his house than he did for the Lord's house. That I should remove it from before my faith. God said, I'm getting it out. It's gone. See you later. Because of, the children, because of the evil of the children of Israel and the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, provocation, they, the people, their kings, the government, their princes under the kings, their priests. And that's not saying if it's the priests, the Levites or the false priests. Their priests. 
Even in the temple of God, there are things going on that shouldn't be going on. The Levites. And their prophets, which we know are false prophets. We met a couple in Jeremiah. And the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have churned unto me the back. back they, they, they turned around against God. They're not even facing God. And not the face. Though I taught them. Rising up early and teaching them. From Moses on. Yet they have not hearkened to, to receive instruction. But they have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile. That's the temple. Now, hardy, ha, ha. I'd like to welcome you, everybody, today. I'd like to welcome you to the house of God. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this Sunday morning? I bet you don't quote John. Jeremiah 32, 34, when you mention your church as the house. Though many churches today in a Laodicean church age have abomination in the house of God. There are some churches up on a good fancy seat up on the stage, the pastor sits on oh, authoritative life. You mean like the Pope sits on his seat? What's wrong with the pastor just sitting down in the pew and when it comes time for he just gets up, goes up to the podium, and opens up the word and starts preaching? Doesn't make a big show. So those, you're in the house of the Lord. Uh, yeah, abomination. Jeremiah 32, 34. I like that. They built the high places of Baal. Those all those high places. Which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom. <coughs> That's where Molech is. To cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire of Molech. You do a search. Uh, excuse me, I got the heat comes. You do a search on Google. Images under Molech. You'll see that almost like a cow kind of like statue. He's got his hands out. Where you put the children. And by levers and pulley, those arms throw the baby into his stomach. Where there's, there's a furnace of fire. Nebuchadnezzar did that with uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Nicole. Today in the world, we we kill the babies before they come out of the womb. Science in the progression. Which, which I command them not. Neither came it into my mind. God didn't think about you. You slay your sons and daughters. He said, well, about the time he called Abraham with Isaac. God never intend that he was going to allow Abraham to kill Isaac. Never. God knew at that last moment, he was gonna, like he did. And he called unto Abraham and said, Abraham, Abraham. Stop. But this killing the baby's been going on long before that period. That they should do this an abomination to cause Judah to sin. You know when the priests mate with the nuns? They would get rid of any of the babies that were produced. 
Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, Jerusalem, whereof ye say, it shall be delivered in the hand of the king of Babylon by sword, by famine, and by pestilence. Over and over. Sword, famine, pestilence. Now, look what God said. Wherefore ye say. He's talking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah and God's having kind of a little attitude back and forth. Now, Jeremiah is not mad at God, and God's not mad at Jeremiah, but there is a little sarcasm going on. And I heard a preacher one time say, sarcasm is a sin. Well, then God sinned. Because God is sarcastic at times. God said in one place, go to Bethel and sin. You know he didn't mean it. God doesn't want you to sin. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. And what we're going to now see, we're going to see again, God is not finished with Israelites. He is not finished with the Jews. There will be no end to the Hebrews. As such as replacement theology. That God's all finished with the Jew. And us Gentiles. We're going to claim the promises of the Jew. That God has forsaken him. Because we're the spiritual Jew. And you'll hear sometimes of these Hollywood stars. You know. We're Jews. Sammy James, Sammy James Jr. claimed that. Right. You know he went around. He was a spiritual Jew, whatever kind of nonsense. British, uh, uh, British, uh, uh, British Israelitism. You know, the Jews went up from here, went up to England and blah, 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 blah. The Mormons, you know, Jesus Christ came over to North America. The Jehovah Witnesses, a bunch, you know, we're the 144,000 and it's comical to have them come to my door and they are black skinned. And if they only knew what the what the Jehovah Witness early watchtowers said about the black skinned people. Whether I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and my great wrath. I will bring them again unto this place. And I will cause them to dwell safely. He brought them back during Ezra and Nehemiah, but things didn't turn out safely. He brought them back in World War I and World War II, but they haven't been dwelling safely. Now he'll bring them back under the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will deal safely. And they shall be my people. And I will be their God. As a corporate body. That's not today. Because his people are not doing right. They proclaim to be following the law which they cannot. They don't go to the Jerusalem three times a year. They don't offer their sacrifices at the brazen altar at the temple because it's not there. Now, individual Jews can get saved, but corporate, they're on a shelf right now. I will give them one heart. Not now. Later. One way. Jesus said, I am the way. That they may fear me forever. They don't fear God. They fear uh, the Arabians. They fear the Catholic Church. They fear Hamas. 
They fear the United Nations. Why do they keep on giving up land? For a false peace. But when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, for the good of them and their children after them, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That's, that covenant is future. It's not now. You get the everlasting? How do you get where God's all finished with the Jew? That I will not turn away from them. Somebody's teaching a lie. To do them good. Somebody's false heresy. You know, that those pilgrims that came to America and built the Christian nation that became the Congregational Church. We are the city of the hill. We are the new Jerusalem. We are the city of God. And we will make the laws. And we will do the laws. And, you know, you can't gamble. And, and you have the Sabbath day of rest. And if you violate the Sabbath day of rest, we're, you know, that's the Congregational Church. That's the seven-day Adventist. But I will put my fear in their heart. The fear of the Lord's beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord's beginning of understanding. They don't have the wisdom. They don't have the understanding. God's fear. They shall not depart from me. Well, as corporate body, yes, they are. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. Now, the teaching will be that God's all finished with it. This is all past tense. This is all in the history. It's not future. I will plant them in the land. Yeah, he did that. He put them in the, But then, you know, they rebelled against him and, you know, Assuredly, with my whole heart and with my whole soul, God will plant them in that land and they're never going to be plucked up. For thus saith the Lord, like as I brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. The field shall be brought in this land. Ah, now the Lord's answering Jeremiah. One field has already been bought. Before the land has even been taken. Wherefore ye say, it is desolate. Without man or beast. It is given to the hand of Chaldean. It will be. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Say, well, you know, God, you said, you know, the Chaldean is going to come. You know, it's going to be a waste and all that. Okay, Jeremiah. Men shall buy fields for money. And subscribe, subscribe evidences. That's exactly what Jeremiah did. And seal them. And take witnesses in the land of Benjamin. This is all that Jeremiah done. In the places about Jerusalem. In the cities of Judah. In the cities in the mountains. In the cities in the valleys. In the cities of the south. For I will cause their captivity to return. Saith the Lord. That happened Ezra and Nehemiah. That happened World War One, World War Two, And it's going to happen permanently when Jesus Christ comes back. Don't you ever say God's all finished with the Jew. That's a cursing sin. That is a heresy. It is false. That you need to repent of. 